Another 20 asylum seekers were sent to Nauru today with the Pacific Solution Mark II in full swing. There are now altogether 120 people in legal limbo indefinitely with many unanswered questions about how they'll be processed. 19 have chosen to go home to Sri Lanka rather than stay in that situation. But activists fear the returnees may face persecution, even torture, after they arrive. Political editor Chris Ullman reports. The huge wings of the frigate bird are made to ride the Pacific's tropical thermals. On Nauru, from a distance, birds that can escape the isolated islands seem the very essence of freedom. They're not like the other birds. Like they come from New Guinea very far out, even Australia. But look closer. Here the birds are entangled in an old custom. Oh, it goes back, way back. The old, the old days. Adonis Gura is part of a Nauruan tradition, capturing, caging and taming frigate birds. It's a game, sort of a game. Now there's a new entanglement on Nauru. A tense city has sprung up to house the asylum seekers flying in from Australia. Today, 20 Iranians and four Sri Lankans arrived, swelling the number of detainees to 120. All are single men and 94 of them are Sri Lankans. The majority of the refugees who come to Australia are Tamils because the Tamils are the ones who are mainly persecuted in Sri Lanka. Of the 10,528 asylum seekers who've arrived in Australian waters since January, 3,621 of them are Sri Lankan, arriving years after the end of that country's civil war. The Sri Lankan government says there's now no reason for the exodus. Sri Lanka is now uh, under one flag uh, with peace uh, prevailing in all corners of the country. Everybody is free to travel around to see people, how the others progress. The Australian government clearly accepts Sri Lanka's assurances that all its citizens are safe. It isn't dispatching Sri Lankans to Nauru because of the weight of arrivals. They're being sent because the government doesn't believe they are genuine refugees and thinks that the threat of years on Nauru will convince some of them to leave. And on Saturday, 18 men did choose to be repatriated from Christmas Island. This is the first transfer. It's a very significant transfer. It's a sign that people are obviously are weighing up their options and that they have been misled by people smugglers. Today, the first Sri Lankan left Nauru bound for home. The government says it's meeting its international commitment not to return asylum seekers to danger because a voluntary return means the person is no longer seeking protection. When they get back, uh, if they have nothing to fear, of course we have to go through the law of the land. Uh, they have left the country illegally. We make the records, uh, question them and uh, go through the process. And I understand uh, the 18 people who returned was with their families within hours of arrival, having gone through the legal procedures. Sarah Nathan believes some of those returned will be persecuted. Well, I know of the Tamils that have been returned previously. They have been picked up at the airport, taken and tortured and questioned, and then sometimes forced to make statements that they have been treated well. That is absolutely wrong. Uh, you had uh, one uh, person who has been uh, involuntary uh, re repatriation. Even he had to be uh, questioned and after seven, eight hours of questioning, he was released. Of course, if there's a criminal act against a particular person, uh, law of the land will prevail. You know what a criminal act is. And even in Sri Lanka, 11,000 hard terrorists who were either captured really, uh, or surrendered has been rehabilitated and they have put back to their normal life. So what is there to be worried for anybody to return? 
But 19 departures is a long way short of what the government needs. Since it rebooted offshore processing on August 13, 46 boats have arrived carrying 2,821 people. And even as it transfers more carefully picked asylum seekers, there are still many unanswered questions about the way processing them under Nauruan law will work. Due process, due legal process is fundamental to getting to first base of identifying who is genuinely in need of protection as a refugee. And that's not a simple task, it's in fact a very complex one. And it's difficult to understand how Nauru, uh, a country with no history, no experience and no laws or processes in place, could in fact be readily capable of undertaking this task to the standard required. I mean, look, the stark reality is this, uh, that if uh, a refugee is wrongly refused under a, a flawed process, they could well face the risk of being sent back to torture or execution. The intention of the government appears to be to remove any possibility that the asylum seekers will be within reach of the Australian legal system. What is clear is that under international law, uh, Australia may try to transfer people to another country for processing, but it can't transfer legal responsibility to those people. So under international law, Australia retains legal responsibility for the fate of people transferred to another place like Nauru or Papua New Guinea. And with no indication as to how long people might be detained on Nauru, even if they're found to be refugees, in the years ahead they will no doubt look up in envy at the one creature that can escape the island at will. Political editor Chris Yulman.